Jingle bells, taunt taunt smell, and he can pay. Chewie's bow may not say whoa when the fin tries to date Ray. Jingle bells, Kenobi fell, and Vader won that round. Kylo's hate sealed his faith in Leia, shot Poe down. Yes, Leia stunned Poe to the ground. Merry Christmas Eve, everybody, and welcome to the Resistance broadcast, better than the Star Wars holiday special. How are you, everybody? On YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you are, we're here to join you on this Christmas Eve morning because we never rest. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm John Hoey. We have a great show in store for you today. A lot more than our typical Monday show. Why? Because it's Christmas, guys. Come on. Joining me today, as always, are my elves. And I'm just kidding. (laughs) Oh, what? <laughs> it is my co-hosts, James Bainey and Lacey Giller. And guys, Merry Christmas Eve. Are you excited about the show? How are you? And how are you celebrating after we record today? Uh, after we record today, I'll probably go Ewokin in a winter wonderland. Oh, our first dad joke of the day clocks in at a minute and 40 seconds. Whatever. Good job, James. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I uh, got my jingle bells going. This is going to be awesome. I'm really excited. Lacey, I love your uh, your ears. Thank you. I have ears on, and I have a sweet sweater that people can't see that lights up. Oh, Very yeah. Cool. I'm wearing my singing The Skywalkers. boys didn't listen to the ugly sweater memo that I set up a week ago. Everyone right. missed that memo, but I'm I like to, to picture my through. Darth Vader like Billy Joel. <laughs> That's pretty good. In a good. tuxedo t shirt. <laughs> yeah, in a tuxedo t shirt. It's formal, t-shirt. yet he's here to party. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see a, a tuxedo Darth Vader. Like it's his like suit, but it also kind of is cut or has like paint on it to make it look like a tuxedo. <laughs> what do you That'd think if, if there was Christmas in Star Wars? What do you think Darth Vader, like in his prime Darth Vader, would be doing? He'd probably like get oh. mad that someone decorated the tree wrong and then end up smashing it. <laughs> that would be Kylo. The let's be supposed honest. To go here. I thought you were gonna say he'd be mad that people are decorating a tree. Like he's just straight Grinch. I do have my new Kylo Ren over here in the corner of my screen. Oh yeah, so I picked that's... that bad boy up at Home Goods for a good price, and then I went to go leave, and the lady. So I like grab my bags to leave, and I just go. I guess I'll take my boyfriend. The lady thought I was hilarious. Worth it. (laughs) Worth the joke. How come you didn't film that and then ask her if Kylo Ren's going to be redeemed in episode nine? Because she had no idea what I was talking about. That's part of the beauty of that, though. I'm going to go to a senior center and ask those people, and they're going to be like, huh? (laughs) Kylo, what? Get out of here. My boy. (laughs) All right, guys. Um, Good thing we don't have old people to listen to the podcast, or else they'd be very mad at me right now. Um, Okay, guys, listen. We have stuff to get into as normal. We have poll results, but, but there's something we have to do first. And if you've been listening recently, there was a bet made on the podcast. And I know James is excited because he doesn't have to do anything here. But you know who else doesn't have to do anything? Me. I don't have to do anything. We made a bet on the podcast between me and Lacey. It was called a spoonful of sugar bet. of sugar helps them sad truth that we didn't get a title or teaser go down in a most delightful way it had to do with will a <laughs> teaser or the title for star wars epi- episode 9 come out by or attached to mary poppins 2 and guess what mary poppins came and she got her umbrella and mary poppins went and there was no teaser or title for star wars episode 9 so now lacy manuel miranda <laughs> needs you to have ruined me do her best julie andrews impression or All emily right. blunt and eat a spoonful of sugar right now on the podcast and i'm just going to sit and enjoy this so i actually now got I bet, like the legit I see a like full scoop cooking show <laughs> oh yeah okay i don't I don't know how I'm going to... All right. I'm probably going to vomit, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. This is the scoop. That's a pretty She's good gonna, scoop. 
she's gonna. Yeah, she has a big it's scoop. Gonna... All right, so Lacey has a giant scoop of sugar. It looks like a big tablespoon. Looks like a poop de scoop. That what? is a big a for you. For those of you poop. not watching on YouTube, she does have a giant yes. <laughs> over the brim spoonful of sugar okay. with the chunks in it and everything. And here we go. Here we go. Are you gonna count me down? Three, Just two, one, sugar! Spoonful of sugar helps the milk. Oh <laughs> she did it. It's it's there. Don't spit it up. Oh, Don't spit it no, up. She's she's coughing. She's trying to did make she it do it. What? Oh, would, it's all over her tongue. Lacey just would, had put a giant mouth full of sugar. Ah, it's still oh. there. Swallow it. Swallow the sugar. Would uh, some medicine help it go down easier? <laughs> <laughs> She's joking, I think. What is it? What What does it taste like? It's, it's like a while. paste. It's like a paste. Oh, so it's like glue. It, mm-hmm. Does it taste good? It tastes like sugar, but it's a paste. <laughs> so, James, Kylo Ren's going to die in episode nine, huh? Uh, yes. Yeah, he's <laughs> definitely a goner. Is she done yet? She's she's making it. She's taking sips of it. There oh, she goes. She's gone. All right. Good all job. Right. Good job, Lacey. All right. I can't wait to see that pie in James face. Lacey has finished the <laughs> end of the bet. She swallowed the spoonful of sugar. She accepts her loss. My dentist is loss. crying right now. Lacey, it has been an honor betting with you. <laughs> Do you have anything to say? Do you have anything to say? Uh, I regret everything. <laughs> Have you changed your mind on when maybe the trailer would come out? Or are you still thinking by the end of the year? I still think it's going to come out by the end of the year, guys. All right. But I had to laugh. <laughs> she must have liked I believe that it was sugar. Scott Gibson tweeted me on, on Inst- uh, Instagram, tweeted me on Twitter. and was <laughs> Tweeted just me like, on Instagram. Yeah, I don't know. I'm out of it. Um, and he wrote, raise your hand if you've been personally victimized by Lacey's like, t- trailer. <laughs> Like beliefs, and he used the clip from Mean Girls where everybody raises their hand. I was like, I'm sorry, Scott. So, Scott, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Lacey, you want to make another bet? Sure. Oh, that didn't go as as I as I thought. I thought she was gonna say no. I can't say no to a bet. (laughs) It's like my crutch. All right. Well, we'll see. We have um, about seven days till the end of the year, which is what the rumor was saying. So we'll see if we do see something. Maybe we do, maybe we don't, but all I know is Lacey oh had God. to eat sugar, and I didn't. So Merry you Christmas didn't. to you, John. Yay. All right, guys. Um, we have to move on, and we have a show to do still. I mean, that was the pinnacle probably, right? But now it's time mm-hmm. for the poll results. And we asked you guys, according to IMDb, Luke Skywalker had one minute of screen time in The Force Awakens, and he had 20 minutes... 21 minutes, sorry, in The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. Do you think Luke Skywalker will have more or less than five minutes of screen time in Episode 9? Now, we talked about this uh, this past Thursday a bit and uh, and last Monday. We gave our thoughts. Now it's time to hear from you guys. And you guys said 13% said exactly five minutes. So Mm -hmm. J.J. Abrams is going to cut him right at five minutes. (laughs) And there you go, Luke. Uh, he's 26. standing there with a stopwatch. He's like, and done. And you're out. <laughs> and Hamill's like, okay, give me my check. I'm out of here. <laughs> it's been a good run. Uh, 26% said less than five minutes. And the winning vote, almost two-thirds of you, 61% of you, said more than five minutes. James Lacey, were you guys surprised that uh, three out of five people think more than five minutes for Luke in episode nine? No, but I am curious to see where the line is. I don't want to do like a bunch of different polls, but it'd be like, okay, let's go seven minutes. Let's go mm-hmm. 10 minutes. Let's, I want to see where that line is where it's like 50 50. Um, I would assume it's probably somewhere around like 10 minutes or so. You know, I think most of the characters in all the other movies get about a solid 20 minutes mm-hmm. if they're like your a main, main leads. Or so. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's got to be like somewhere between 10 and 20. Um, other than that, uh, not much. We've talked about this numerous times. So, Lacey, anything surprise you about the poll? 13% exactly five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> not really, because I said more, but like my thoughts are like six minutes. Okay, mm. so just, just over. Yeah. Okay. Um, we did have a best comment, and this was by Adrian Canto at Chepo Canto. I think that's the mm-hmm. first time they've written to us and gotten on the show. So, how are you? Welcome Hi, to Adrian. The Resistance. 
Uh, yo, Adrian, you did it. Um, they said, <laughs> I, did want it. <laughs> I want a full movie about old Luke Skywalker. That's interesting, actually. Uh, but I have a bad feeling about him in episode nine. So it looks like Adrian voted for... What would for... the movie be, though? Is he talking like old when he's still in an academy? Or is he talking like on the island old? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's... I think it... he's talking between like pre-Force Awakens stuff. Got it, got yeah, it. Maybe that makes anywhere sense. Anywhere in that Just era... Just like old th- Luke. Yeah, 30 years yeah. after Return of the Jedi, old Luke, I guess. Because Island um, Luke, we saw that. And it's... He, his schedule is not busy. Yeah, he's not he's busy not at doing all. anything. So, yeah. Uh, so Adrian said less than five minutes. So there you go. He was a part of the 26% of that vote. So thank mm-hmm. you very much, Adrian. Guys, that is it for now. We have some other stuff to announce later, including uh, two giveaway winners, because thanks to Woo. you guys, we hit 3,000 followers on Twitter. Thank you all very much Woo. for your support, 3,000 and beyond. So we appreciate that. James, your time has come. It is the Resistance Report. We have a lot of stuff to talk about, so let's fire it up, man. It's the Resistance. Man, we got some good news. Lots of uh, some and some interesting things coming out of Episode Nine. Some spoilery, maybe Ooh. rumory stuff. Coming up out of episode nine. But before we get to that, we got some spoilery, rumory stuff about the Mandalorian. (laughs) Whoa. uh, Without further ado, as John always says. uh, So Nick Nolte, guys. Nick Nolte was announced for the Mandalorian a while back, and then he was officially announced. And we were like, who is this guy going to play? Is he going to play the Indiana Jones uh, I don't know, whatever <laughs> is he going to play this old grizzled man or I don't know anything like there's so That's many different versions that we had uh, tossed about, but it mm-hmm. looks like he's going to play probably the last thing anybody expected, which is an Ugnaught. Uh, if you don't know what an Ugnaught is, they're probably most famously in the franchise, uh, in Empire Strikes Back, when C-3PO walks into the room and he gets blasted, and then later Chewbacca comes in and he's picking him up, and they're tossing his head back and forth, kind of playing monkey in the middle with him. Um, those are the Ugnats. They're short, pig-like creatures that uh, did a little bit of research on them, and they don't speak English. So mm. this is kind of an interesting thing. There's also a little bit of uh, rumors about like how they're going to do this. But uh, I want to jump to you, Lacey, first. Uh, what do you think of uh, Nick Nolte playing an Ugnaught? Do you think this is the was like inspired casting, or do you think they were just like, "Hey, we got Nick Nolte. What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make him an Ugnaught." <laughs> I'm surprised because I honestly thought he was going to be either a bad guy or what John thought, where he's going to be like this old, like grizzled man that's going to help the main character along. Um, mm-hmm. I think it, it totally is out of left field that it's this random Ugnaught. But at the same time, I feel like oftentimes we get these characters that are played by great actors like John Favreau played that, you know, that character in Solo. I'm blanking right now what the name is. What's the name? Oh, Rio Durant. Oh, so, Rio yeah, Durant. I was going have a with huge Pre-Vizla, role. but... Right, who didn't have a huge role, but it's John Favreau. Mm, so, yeah. I mean, it could be something as simple as John went to him and was like, hey, we have this character. Do you want to play it? And he was like, sure. Yeah, That's a yeah. good point. Like, he, he could have done the Rio Durant thing and loved the experience, and, like, mm-hmm. I recorded my lines from home and sent them in, yeah. and Nolte's mm-hmm. like, okay, okay, give me that check. Right. <laughs> what right. are the lines? I'll read them. <laughs> yeah, so so I, I believe that's one of the rumors, right, John, is that he hasn't even been on the set. It's more like yeah. uh, a digital thing that they're doing. So I guess, I mean, I guess um, Jason Ward over at Making Star Wars is just pretty much... <laughs> like leaking everything possible our, our, about the our key leaker for everything about the he, Mandalorian. He's yeah. the Mandalorian guy, I guess, right? So uh, the Manda leaker, the Manda leaker, the Manda <laughs> spoiler. Uh, yeah, um, it's weird though, Ugnot, because I didn't think they spoke basic. So is Nick Nolte gonna be like, 
Manda spoiler and <laughs> I was going there, Lacey, and then I didn't. I was just like, it's too far gone. <laughs> but yeah, I guess they said he already did his lines and sent them in. Um, mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's kind of strange. But I mean, what Lacey brought up about the fact that Favreau kind of did a role that he didn't have to be physically doing it because I don't think Rio Durant was a motion capture. I don't think John no. Favreau was wearing a suit, right? No. So yeah. Um, but this is a little different though because they said that they were they had the person. Uh, who was there, who was giving the lines. And then there was some sort of like some facial stuff that they were doing that would be in place over so that it would in fact be Nick Nolte's face. Yeah, they're using, they're using, um, I forget what they call that, where they impose, digitally impose Mm -hmm. the face blend, kind of maybe similar to what they did with Tarkin um, post-mortem with Peter Cushing's face. Uh, So they may take scans of (laughs) Nolte's face doing the lines Mm -hmm. and impose them onto the new actor's face or the stand-in's face. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I don't know the reason, like, did they say, like, we need Nick Nolte for this role? Like, it's it's a very interesting thing, but I don't think anybody would have guessed. Uh, I know we didn't. I wonder, Lacey I wonder thought it was a villain. I thought it was a, you know, down-on-your-luck kind of guy. And I forget, James, what you had said, but I don't think any of us were thinking Ugnaught. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I just think that uh, they're, they're probably just creating like a digital face that happens to look like Nick Nolte or something. I don't know. Maybe they are doing stuff with his face digitally. Um, do you guys think there's any chance that uh, Nick Nolte said like, hey, John, do me a favor. Put me in this show, but make me like the stupidest character in Star Wars. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I want to be one of those stupid things from Empire. Yeah, I wonder if, because he had auditioned for Han Solo. We had talked about that previously oh, back gosh. in the 70s. So what if he's just like... Could have been the worst, make me the best. Or could have been the best, make me the worst. Yeah, just thing. like just get me in Star Wars. I have to check that <laughs> off my list. I'm 76 years old. I tried back then. Just get me in there somehow. I think a lot of people just it. want to be a part of it. So they don't care what their role is. I mean, think of all the people for that sure. just cameoed. Yeah. And maybe, because it's on a streaming service, maybe he gets some kind of royalties deal out of it every time his episode plays. Like, that could be a big part um, of it, too. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you're probably right. I was going to say, I mean, there could be, like, flat fee, just a guarantee for being in the program. Not for but, a guy like uh, Nolte. He wants that. He wants to walk out to the mailbox every morning and get that uh, that check from a uh, play. It depends <laughs> on how big your role is. You know, that might be just what they're offering to be in the show. But um, do you guys want to talk about the music? Well, I just want to say real quick, I wonder if he is going to make uh, an, a lot of money or an ug not lot of money. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yes, I want to talk about the music. <laughs> 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 That's the ug not sound um so we got uh this is not a rumor this is an official announcement this is really legitimately happening uh we got the composer officially announced for this uh he was brought on by favreau uh just because he liked his work and um we uh, the composer is is ludwig Jorensen, and he is known for doing uh some television didn't he do uh, black panther and he's done lots of uh, big A-list movies like Black mm-hmm. Panther. He mm-hmm. did Creed and Creed Two, um, which also and Fruitvale Station, which goes to show he's got a lot with uh, Ryan Coogler. Yep. Um, uh, he also has done uh, his own music and like produced stuff, and including uh, Childish Gambino. Uh, he's worked oh, on right. his records. So this guy is actually, I mean, you can't say he doesn't understand music. He's worked with multiple, multiple people, and his composing jobs are just like off the chart. He has a lot of them, and they're always big, big pictures. Um, Mm -hmm. If you haven't, if you're not familiar with his work, um, you can go check it out. Just, you know, go to YouTube and put in, you know, Black Panther theme or something. Um, But uh, this guy is going to be a name that we recognize uh, for years and years to come because of uh, his involvement in the show being the first composer of a television show. Are you guys good with this pick or were you hoping that it would be somebody different? Um, are, are you, uh, I don't know. Is that it? L- Lacey, what do you say? Do you like this guy? Do you like the pick? Yeah, I love his stuff. I loved the soundtrack for Black Panther. So I am 100% on board. Yeah, I didn't know... Um, I, I I went back and listened to some of the stuff just because I was like, what was the theme, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when I, I heard it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, it's cool, too, because he was able to, like, for instance, when he did uh, the Creed stuff, he, he bleeds in a lot of 
uh, new Creed sound like his own music with familiar themes that were in Rocky. So that goes to show that we might actually kind of get that, um, that rogue one Mm kind of feel where it's like, here's the music, but then here Mm -hmm. is also like, you know, like you heard it in there. I just love that. Um, John, uh, I'm going to ask the same question. Like, are you good with the pick? (laughs) Yeah. You just took exactly what I was going to say about. Uh, Yeah. I just, (laughs) um, took it out. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess I don't really, uh, I don't um, know too much about him, although I've seen all those movies, but no, like none of the themes are sticking out, but uh, I, you know, I know he's done good work, but I was going to say like what you said, maybe, you know, they picked him because he knows he has a proven track record of, of blending in 40-year-old themes into new stuff mm-hmm. um, with, with Rocky and even with Black Panther you know, he probably had to trickle in some other Avengers-based, Marvel-based themes here and there on some crossover stuff. And maybe he even had to work with uh, the people who did scores for the Avengers. I'm not sure who did that to say, um, like, here's, here's Alan my Silvestri stuff. Alan did. He, all right. So, yeah, maybe he had to work with him to, like, blend stuff for Avengers movies, you know. And then um, the fact that he also he co-wrote a lot of songs with Childish, Childish Gambino, not only just producing. So he does, he has writing chops for that type of music. So mm-hmm. it seems like he has a wide array of stuff. And I think it's a smart choice for this reason. Um, he's so different from a John Williams that it won't be like a, oh, they're just bringing in another guy who sounds like John Williams or a wannabe John Williams. And then mm-hmm. we have to compare him. You can't really right. compare John Williams to this guy. And I like that they went so far away from it. But knowing he'll still be able to bring that Star Wars sound without mm-hmm. worrying about some kind of direct comparison type of thing. So yeah. I think it's a w- I think it's a win pick. And, um, you know, st- music is very important in Star Wars. I'm curious how they implement it in a TV series compared to a movie. I'm very intrigued to see what they do with that. Because he has to do a theme song for the, the show to yeah. open up. It's gonna be like oh, the gosh. Mandalorian, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Mandalorian, coming to He's town coming to, to kill get you. Yeah, I love gonna how you went right to like pack. that Nickelback. <laughs> I'm trying to do like a South Parky thing, but yeah, oh, Nickelback. Yeah. I guess. It's like the furthest you get from the actual theme song and what it's probably gonna be. I'm interested to man think about that for a second. That's a good point, John. Uh, or was that Lacey that said that it has to do with the theme song? Lacey's we've never it. had we've never had like a we've had Star Wars themes, but mm-hmm. they're all like cues that happen in the mu- the movie. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like a theme song is like every week. I guess we've had theme songs. What am I talking about? Rebels can uh, resistance. Yeah. No, yeah. they they sort of do, but they're like dun 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 dun. It's <laughs> like know? a spin off of normal existing themes. Yeah. But. Yeah, I would think that they're going to do like the Netflix thing where it's like a really long, drawn or out, HBO, slow, yeah. yeah, HBO kind of thing. Yeah. Um, okay, but uh, but n- now that we know who Nick Nolte's playing, now that we know uh, who the composer is, what do we really know about the Mandalorian? Do we know the story? No. Yes. We might know the story. This comes from a behind the scenes sizzle reel for Disney Plus. Uh, they were talking about the show and they were giving us a lot of information and they kind of gave us the plot of the series, basically kind of giving us a rundown of this character is going to be involved in a situation that goes wrong and he's going to have to uh, save the life of or adopt this infant child that was left behind during the aftermath of a shootout. Um, it's pro- it's uh, going to involve other bounty hunters and he has like this arsenal of of uh, weapons and things. And they're going to go to different planets. All these things were kind of uh, showcased or talked about in there. And they also mentioned a very large woman. Uh, we're speculating that that could be Gina Carano, mostly because we don't really have a lot of casting and that's uh, a decent pick from what we have. Uh, but she is said to be playing a chief of sorts, uh, although her alignment and her role in the plot is uh, left pretty vague at this point. So was this on par with what you were thinking, John? Is this a, is this a good move? Do you think that uh, the whole uh, he now has to take care of a small child is what you want to see a bounty hunter doing? I mean, it, it's a very easy way to humanize a character without having to do too much. Uh, so that's mm-hmm. a smart move right there. 
Um, think about the professional, right? You have this guy who's an assassin. He's a hitman. And then 12-year-old Natalie Portman walks into his life and instantly you find out that this guy has, you know, emotion and he cares and he, you know, it, it, it takes you there immediately. So I think that's a really good move if that's the case here. Um, and then one other thing that we didn't bring up from the first article, like they're, they're, they're saying that it's quite possible and pretty much almost confirmed, although Lucasfilm hasn't done this yet, that Bosk and IG-88 are going to be in this series. Uh, so this is nuts. That's crazy because then you're talking about Empire Strikes Back era bounty hunters getting in the mix here and think about what they can do with modern CGI with an IG-88 now, like stuff we've seen in video games from IG-88, Bosk, everyone's talking about Bosk. Remember we even on the podcast speculated like, cause we heard Solo, he was supposed to be second in command to Enfys mm-hmm. Nest and we're like, why'd they boot him out? Now we know why, because they were saving him for this. Uh, So that's kind of interesting how how they employ him there. Um, But just a lot of stuff and how they're going to, it may be a battle for this kid. Like maybe these other bounty hunters are after this kid for some reason. So maybe the kid is this quote unquote MacGuffin of the movie or show, I should say. And there's some importance about this kid that they need need them for. Um, That, that, that's obviously speculation, but that interests me. But again, back down to the root of it, the fact that, it will bring Pedro Pascal's character uh, into an area where we care about him and realize that he cares about other people. I think that's a smart move. So the whole thing about the Trandoshan and IG-88, that that stuff makes sense to me because one of the first things Jon Favreau said when he was asked about the series back you know, when Solo was premiering was that he was excited for this thing because he had been writing it since he was in fifth grade or whatever it was, you know, he'd been writing it. He'd been putting (laughs) these stories together. So that goes to show that his stories probably aren't going to involve much about the new Republic or about Mm -hmm. like uh, a a baby Ben Solo or something or, or uh, Emphis Nest. It most likely is going to be like, what was the coolest thing to the kids when they were growing up with Star Wars? And it probably is Boba Fett and the bounty hunters and stuff like that. And all of that makes sense with uh, with the timeline of when he was right. saying, you know, how long he'd been working on these particular stories. Lacey, do you like the idea of all these bounty hunters or were you kind of hoping that they would do like technically he's Mandalorian, but we want to make this character something different, like kind of running away from his Mandalorian past or it looks like it might not be that. I mean, or do I you think it still is with the kid and all that. I expected they were going to bring other characters in. Um, you're talking about someone that was a fan of the original movies, so he's going to John Favreau, so he's going to bring in characters that he loves that haven't been explored yet. It's like his mm-hmm. opportunity to do that. So that makes total sense. The kid thing. I'm going to bring up a really lame example right now, but the ladies that are listening will probably understand my example. Uh, Hallmark Channel movies. The dads always have a kid. And that's like the way they write it in so that you feel bad for the dad and mm. that he has that emotional connection. <laughs> yeah. So I completely 100% agree with John that that's the way that they tie it back to him. Like, it's like John Wick with the dog. Like, it's like mm-hmm. you have to have this thing that they need to care for because then it brings their humanity back to something and they're not right. just this hard, crazy person. I I also, you know, I'm sorry, that, they do. They always have a kid every single time. I, I can't I, I can safely, <laughs> even though I'm wearing this hat right now and I look like a silly, <laughs> silly guy, I can safely say I don't watch Hallmark, Hallmark movies. My parents do. And that's fine. But I'll take your word for it, Lacey. But, sure. you know, James, I was just thinking like he was probably like 10, 12 years old when Star Wars came out. Right. He's like in his early 50s. Favreau. Could be, yeah, somewhere around there. So he That'd probably be. had Bosk action figures and like he's yeah. probably like setting them up in his room. And do you think like when he like finally like he did Swingers and he's like, all right, now I got this. I did, he did Elf and then he like gets his first Disney movie and he, he crushes uh, Iron Man. You think he's like, I'm probably going to get a chance to do some Star Wars stuff. And he's or maybe like, that's st- the goal. Maybe that's what he was working towards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, my story. I got better go find my old composition books. I got some good stuff back at mom's house. <laughs> I wonder if there's any chance that he was like scoping out the prequels when they were doing might have been, things. Might have, been, might have been too early for him because that, like when they first started doing The Phantom Menace, he was just doing swingers, you know? Yeah, but I'm saying, I mean, I don't know. 
I mean, it's not that like everybody in Star Wars is like an A-lister. There's still like tons of extras and other things that are like Mm -hmm. evolved and have lines and things like that. Like look at Rose Byrne, for instance. She was like involved in the prequels, but she wasn't like a big star. Now she's had more success because she's continued to grow since those movies. Right. Um, What's the other one that uh, Kira Knightley, you know, she was also in those movies as well. Um, There's probably other ones that I can't think of, but... um, Oh, I, I like thought you meant idea. from a directing standpoint. You mean just like to to be in it? Oh yeah, I just meant oh, like yeah. Yeah. like as a as a fan. He's like, oh dude, I might actually get a chance to yeah. be in Star Wars. Yeah, but I, word on the street is George Lucas might be getting back in the saddle. Man, those movies are gonna be great. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. John Favreau <laughs> auditions to play Anakin. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Um. <laughs> No, uh, I, I mean, we, we, uh, but going back to the adopting a kid thing, like, uh, Caleb Doom was, was adopted, uh, kind of, you know, taught under the wing of, so was Han Solo now that we have Beckett. Um, so was Leia and Luke. kind of a, what was that? So were Leia and Luke. Yeah. Um, well, I meant more like under the terms of like an outlaw. Oh, I thought you just meant adopted. Oh no! I just meant, I mean like more like a parental figure that is like kind of not who you'd want to be your parent because they're not really in the right crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now they all of a sudden have a heart for you. Yep. Um. So I I kind of understand that angle and that could be kind of neat. We've seen it in Star Wars before. Um. I wonder if this all leads to the Mandalorian dying at the end of the series. I mean, you could probably almost lock that in, I think. Probably. Do you think? Yeah. It's so it's so wild, wild west. I mean, they didn't kill off like Ezra, like at the end of that series. Yeah. But, but they th- left him in this big void of what if. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying they didn't kill him off. But uh, but it would I be I love how the, to... show, the show's not even out yet and we're, we're killing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Star uh, Wars fans, we're it... crazy. But if he died, then that would leave this kid who's, let's say they do four seasons. That's probably like, you know, four years from now. But in the show, it'll probably be like, you know, eight years later or something. Mm-hmm. Well, so if you we got see, this if, kid who's like eight years older than he was when the show started and he's grown up and had so many experiences and now he's left on his own. Probably people would say, well, I want I want to see more of that. And well, it ties it back to Django and, and Boba Fett. In the prequels. Yeah. That's like literally the same exact situation where you have a guy who's a bounty hunter with a son. It's like a repeat. Yeah. It's yeah. poetry. Well, that's it another rhymes. example. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully this kid's not like, yeah, Mandalorian, get him. Yeah, that'll show him. Yeah. <laughs> I hate him, man. Um, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. We love Daniel Logan. All right. Well, that's all we got really about the Mandalorian. I am going to uh, toss this next story kind of over to John because he was the person that put together this great article that uh, nothing, nothing was Star Wars Newsnet. This is not our rumor. This is not us saying, hey, we have information that uh, there's going to be some footage shown this month. We just kind of decided to put everything in one place where you could kind of check it out and say, hey, check for yourself. John, what what kind of stuff were you pulling for information to kind of that may or may not lead us to uh, making a decision on whether or not we're going to see some footage? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll try to make this quick, just like bullet point it. But it started with um, I heard from somebody I know who um, knows a lot of this stuff, and I talked about it on my Patreon video, and I still um, hold to that. That they said um, seven to ten days, and this was last week. Uh, you can expect something from episode nine. I was like, holy cow, this guy's telling me that that's crazy. So then I started digging deeper a little bit. And then we looked at the other information out there and I spoke with the, the guys over at trailer track. Um, and they know their stuff when it comes to trailers and trailer releases and things like that. And they brought up the fact that, uh, and I'll even just quote them here. Um, he said, if a teaser for episode nine was this week, it'd be online by now, or it would have been out, uh, it would have been rated. Uh, they would have heard about it, the trailer, the teaser and trailer being rated because those need to be rated for releases in certain theaters of a certain show and mm-hmm. for certain movies. And he said, for example, Disney's other trailers set for this week at cinemas, Lion King, Artemis Fowl, Avengers, Captain Marvel were all rated in the past two weeks before their release. And there's been no rating for a Star Wars teaser or trailer. That's your first sign. So then I said, well, why can't it hit theaters next week? 
And he said, well, because Aquaman, Bumblebee, and Mary Poppins are the biggest releases this month, and there's a reason Disney um, attaches scheduling for teasers to certain movie releases. So, Which is if, where my thought came yeah, from. Yeah, your thought process yeah, came from. Those movies came and went How in terms of... How was that sugar, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> um, so th- they're obviously not tied to those movies, and um, they made another point that it would come out online first, or right before it's attached to a movie because of bootlegging. Mm-hmm. You don't want bad versions sure. of the teasers going out online and things like that. Um, and then I did a little more digging, checked with a couple of other indi- individuals in the know, and they had uh, no direct information of, of hearing about a teaser coming out. And then, you know, we just reiterated what Frosty from Collider had said, which was, you'd be shocked if we didn't see something by Christmas. And then Mark Fernandez, the CEO of Collider, said he had on good authority that uh, we'd see something before the end of the year. Um, so we're just putting all that together, and everything pointed us to saying that um, from what all these folks are saying is that uh, teaser doesn't sound imminent, um, but the window is still open for some kind of behind-the-scenes reel with maybe some shots, that sort of thing. But that remains to be seen. Right now it's Christmas Eve, and we're about a week away from the end of the year, so we'll see within the next seven days if anything surfaces. Yeah. Lacey? I was gonna oh, make, I was gonna say something, but because this episode's coming out on Christmas Eve, it makes no sense. Be- because it is Christmas Eve right now. Because we might have already <laughs> seen a teaser. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They might have you I, know teased uh, it last night and then te- put it up on Good Morning America <clears throat> this morning. So da 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 I uh I can't speak I don't remember speaking on the podcast about this specifically, but uh, I do know that I've stated, you know, to, to friends and to you guys and, and to our <clears> Patreon <throat> um, chat people that I just I I think that Frosty's tweet seemed very uh, personal. Like it, it, did, it wasn't like information that he had. And so like, well, I've already seen the trailer. I already know it exists. <clears throat> I, they told me that it was going to come out. So I'm just going to say I'd be shocked if that all wasn't true. Mm-hmm. It didn't read to me like that. It read to me like saying this makes marketing sense in my mind. And I would be shocked if, if we didn't see something in the sense of like that just makes so much sense. Why wouldn't you put out a Star Wars trailer? I'm just guessing. I, the I, same I, way I, that Lacey said, that just makes sense to me. Right. Uh, I, but they also I would said- put money on this kind of thing. But John brings up the Mark Fernandez thing that says, you know, they're, they're from the same company. They probably have the same information. He says that he has it on good authority. We got to assume that's either either Frosty or not, but they, but regardless, whoever it is, is probably feeding the same information to them. So it does right, kind of, but the paint trailers a weird in the past have said this Christmas, next Christmas. So I could see them doing something right before and or right after Christmas saying next Christmas. Yeah. I I'm, I'm going with they, that they've, they've always released the title before the trailer. Always. We've never gotten the title and the trailer at the same time. So if we were going to get anything, we were going to get the title. Um, And the other thing that I was going to say was that, yeah, you're right. They always say this Christmas, but they can say this Christmas in April because it's right. And they could definitely do something. But if they were releasing it like on the the 19th, which was what the bet was based on, if they were to say this Christmas, obviously that doesn't make sense. So they would have to say next Christmas. No, no, I was saying that for in one year. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, Yeah. like in one year kind of thing. So they could say in the trailer, if it comes out New Year's Day or after New Year's Day, in marketing-wise, they could say something like, the saga comes to to an end this year. Like, because then it's 2019. This is the year that the saga ends. I, I don't think we're getting a teaser anytime soon in terms of a legitimate here's all stuff from the movie teaser teaser, right? I am not closing the door on us potentially seeing a J.J. Abrams introduced behind the scenes type of thing. Or a title. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe even not a title. We may just get something because J.J. Abrams had released those Force for Change videos before they released the title for... He released two Force for Change videos before releasing the title for episode uh, seven. Um, I thought seven it, got announced in November, the year before. It, 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 it did. The, the yeah. title got announced November 8th. November 8th. And then the, tr- the, the year teaser, before. 
Yep. And then yes. the teaser yeah. was like November 23rd on Black Friday. Um, yep. so, so they did the title right before the teaser. Um, now, I don't necessarily... And that's subscri- the closest it's ever been. Every other movie has been Rogue One was in March, and they didn't release the first... Yeah. The, the title was in March, didn't release anything till April. Last Jedi was in January, didn't release anything till mm-hmm. April. And Solo was in October, didn't release anything till January. So there's always usually a pretty big chunk. The only reason we got the Force Awakens title so close to the trailer was because... They wanted to put that information out there first, and then like when was Last Jedi? days later, January what? Last Jedi was January. announced in January, uh, and the the first look at the movie didn't come until April, which is why I, I have my bet on title is in January because yeah, I no. think they were going off the Last Jedi marketing plan. But let's not forget that the the Last Jedi was done filming well before that. Um, they finished filming that movie in like August or September or something. So he had four months and then released the title. JJ, it's still going to be filming in January um, and even further after that. So it would not shock me if we don't see, I guessed February for the title and then first trailer, not till celebration still. And when, I'm did, sort of, when did filming wrap for Last Jedi? I just said like August or September because Carrie oh, died okay. in December. Um, they were done for a few months. Oh. He, he, he was, he yeah, was, gotcha. they, they were good to go. Like that was the one star Wars movie that didn't have any production problems. You know, <laughs> it was just yeah, like, yeah. boom, boom, done. Uh, now JJ's finishing allegedly at the end of February. Uh, would not shock me if he wanted to wait until he was done filming to announce a title to say like, Hey, we're done with principal photography and the movie's called boom. Yeah, um, that makes sense. But again, like I said, I, I, I still wouldn't shock me if we saw us still lay, Hey, look, this is what we're working on. We're not giving Do you, you the remember title when yet, but JJ take a look. tweeted and said, "Hey, I'm going to give you live updates." He's the best. <laughs> yeah. that, is that the best biggest troll job of all time? Yeah, JJY. <laughs> or, or maybe you know, he's saving them up and he'll put them out next year. Like, and once he's done with production, so he's in control. You know, maybe that's what he's doing. Who knows? Um, maybe. But uh, yeah, I'm not sleeping on the fact that this week we don't maybe see something. But I haven't completely closed that door. But I don't think it's going to be a teaser. Yeah. I, I don't think we're getting anything by the end of the year. But do you guys want to go back to talking about more rumors? Because there's one more that we'd like to slip in here. Let's it, you know, it's Christmas Eve. Rumor. Let's do one more. Let's open Let's one, one more, more gift. More, right? One more um, gift. So is Lacey this muted? one <laughs> is gonna <laughs> sound <laughs> this one is gonna sound super kind of sketchy, but this person uh, even though they're posting their information on Reddit, this person uh, has posted things before that have been verified by other people who are... Um, so it's reputable. Yeah, reputable, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, they, they've, they've said things before that have come true or they've said things before that other people come along and go, no, 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 listen to this guy, he's telling the truth. So We're so thirsty we're gonna, as fans right now that we're like, I please, know, yeah. anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, and uh, this is a little spoilery if you're really touchy on that stuff, but we've been kind of talking about that throughout the episode. Um, so I'm just going to read this. This this is what he's saying. Um, and this is about what, troopers. James? This is about episode nine. Episode um, nine. Yeah. We have heard some stuff uh, about there being like a lake and there were some fogs and people wearing certain outfits and stuff. And then Which this you rumor saw, came There was out. a picture of the lake with the fog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then this one came out and they were saying that was something that was kind of consistent with that, which is resistance troopers come out of the water and the first order is facing the other way and they get ambushed by the resistance troopers. Uh, they also say a large... Uh, a rather large bat-like prosthetic creature apparently comes into the frame and grabbed a a, a wired stormtrooper, like yanking him up or whatever. And then uh, they also mentioned that there were little people in green suits also <laughs> running around the set. So this is leprechauns um, in Star Wars Episode Nine. I know it's like it it, it gets worse and worse. It, it, the the rumor it's like well there was resistance and first order uh, first order troopers they were fighting. You're but like, imagine yeah, that. that. Makes sense. And then, okay, let's take a step Oh, there's back. like a creature. Then there's like people in green suits. Right, but then Santa Claus that is shot, there though, and, of them coming out of the water with fog. Oh yeah, yeah. that's badass. That's such a yeah. good shot. Yeah, of yeah. them just coming it out remind- of the water. 
Well, yeah, it, it's um, it's kind of taking that like that SEAL Team Six, like a kinda, Vietnam type thing. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And and uh, with the 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 fog on the water thing, it also kind of reminds me a little bit of that scene that we didn't get from Rogue One with Krennic like walking through the water. Oh, with the yeah. cape, like, yeah. See, yeah, to see like the the troopers like coming out and the water's like just slowly kind of dripping off of them and stuff. I mean, it, the idea is is cool, and that is definitely war. Like it's Star Wars. If you're gonna have a ground a ground battle, and it's supposed to be the resistance, the rebellion, they're they're re- the rebellion again. They're the remember? underdogs. They have to be creative. Exactly. They're mm-hmm. gonna guerrilla tactic this thing to death. Um. So it th- th- these things make sense to me. And I said uh a-, a while ago when I was talking about my episode nine pitches, I think they are going to go with some sort of like um Ewok like creature or other aliens that are helping them fight. Um, mm-hmm. And so that hearing this, a rather large bat like prosthetic creature uh, and little people in, in green suits could be any number of different type of alien that this, this makes sense to me, uh, um, even yeah, though it is just so coming from Reddit. To clarify, they're not wearing like three piece green suits. These aren't little people in suits. You're trying to tell no, me. No, no, no. They're like, they're, they're like uh neckties. Uh, white, white undershirt with yeah. like a lime green polka dot suit is, I like that. I, it's He's that's joking. what it says. He's that's not being what it serious, says. people. <laughs> no, it's like uh green screen suits, like, like replaceable. The, yeah. Like the invisible. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I'm curious what that is. I, I, I'd be, I'd be very surprised if it's Ewoks. Cause then it's just like, Oh, JJ, what are you doing, man? You know, you got the you got the mm-hmm. uh, the harsh the critiques from the Force Awakens for the desert stuff and all that. What are you doing, man, with the Ewoks? But right. uh, I'd be curious to see what kind of little creatures they are. But I mean, this does sound very interesting. Uh, an ambush type of thing. Um, gotta love a good ambush in Star Wars. That's that's very very rebellion Star Wars stuff, like you said. I agree. All right, guys. Well, since this was the uh, the Christmas holiday special the the what what is it better than the star wars holiday special there it is uh, we we decided to skip the rundown and go ahead and talk about in a little more in depth about all these rumors and things so there isn't a scoundrels rundown to nope. send away to john for um however i am going to send away to john to announce some of the winners that we've had for our recent giveaways. There so are many giveaways. two winners for two giveaways. This is a big day for the resistance. John, okay. who has won? All right. This is crazy because the first one we picked before we started recording. And the second one I'm going to do live right now and then tweet at the person as we're recording and we'll see if by the end of recording that they get the, the tweet. So we'll see if this all works out. All right. So the first one, Lacey and I went shopping, guys. We went to Target. I don't know if you saw the video. Head to, uh, is it on? Is it public? Or is it on our channel? The, I don't know. I didn't see it. You didn't see it. James didn't watch it. Lacey, is that full <laughs> video on our channel? I forget. Or is it just I think on? it is. Yes. Okay. It is. It was made public. Yeah. So there's a video of me and Lacey at Target shopping, and Lacey's making fun of me and throwing stuff at me, and then we eventually did buy stuff. And what we bought was uh, Emphis Nest Black Series with the Swoop Bike. It's so awesome. So cool. We, I think we both wanted to keep that one. Uh, then we have the Porg Funko. Pop, which is a sad porg, the one that watched Chewie about to eat the other porg. Then we have mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the book, which I always keep forgetting what the title of the book is, but it's like the movie aliens making and creatures. aliens and creatures book, uh, which has all these cool pullouts and all that cool stuff. Uh, awesome book. And then the last item was the Lego Micro Fighters Millennium Falcon with Chewbacca. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, then we had mm-hmm. these really cheesy dumb masks that we also nope. threw in there too. <laughs> Only for <laughs> you guys. All about them. You guys all about him. retweeted, you followed us, you entered, and we thank you for that. But we have one winner, and I'm going to announce who that is right after this commercial break. I'm just kidding. We don't have commercial <laughs> breaks on the Resistance broadcast. Uh, the w- <laughs> Not yet. Head over to tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, so the winner of all that stuff is Big Dave! 
Steve and yeah. Big Dave Pens. Congratulations, Yay. Big Dave. You're taking home the Black Series Emphasis Nest with Swoop Bike. You're taking home the Creatures and all that other cool stuff book that I keep forgetting the name of. You're taking home the Funko Pop Sad Porg, and you're taking home the Lego Micro Fighters Millennium Falcon and Chewbacca and those four creepy masks that you're going to laugh at when you get. You're taking, He's taking home. them home. Where does he have to go to pick them up? Yeah, he has to drive <laughs> to a certain location to pick them all up. Uh, uh, no, uh, we'll get that. We'll message you. Home. We'll message you for your info and get that out to you. So congratulations to Big Dave. Yay. Yeah, Big Dave. We want to thank all of you for entering. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. That's our little bundle package out uh, giveaway for you guys. So congrats to Big Dave. But there's and more. Th- th- and thanks to Patreon people for making that giveaway possible. Yes, thank you to all of our patrons at mm-hmm. patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. You guys keep this engine no running uh, more than we could have imagined. <laughs> so we're going to have more of this stuff in the future. Thank you all. Uh, but we aren't done yet because this is our better than the Star Wars holiday special episode. And we put it out there. Got, we were about to one up them. We were about 20 or so followers away from 3000. And I kind of just Look threw out, it out life there. Day. And I said, if we hit 3,000 followers by the time we start recording this episode, we will activate another giveaway package that we will reveal later. And later is now, because we hit 3,000 followers, so thank you all so much for your support. Let's let's head to 4,000 soon. But we have a new giveaway, and what we're giving away here is uh, Disney Store exclusive solo figurines with all you know your main characters from the movies in one collective set exclusive from the Disney store and a Kylo Ren mug. Uh, so uh, I wonder who picked that one out. Now, this was the video done by <laughs> Lacey and James when they were down in Disney hanging out. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, go check that out. But um, we are going to pick a winner on that right now. I'm so nervous. Bear with me with the music. So I bet you're wondering why I chose that mug. Dun, well, guys, dun, let me dun, tell dun, you. Dun, 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 I chose that dun, mug because it was a Kylo Ren dun, mug. Dun, 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 okay. Dun. Okay, we have a winner. The winner oh, drum roll forever. of right. the second giveaway right now live coming at you is at Fulcrum Andor. Yay! Kylo 10. That's Kylo 10. Kylo 10. Been listening for a long time. Congratulations. That's awesome. (laughs) Congratulations. You are taking home a Disney Store exclusive solo figurine set and the Kylo Ren mug. Uh, Congratulations. I am going to send a tweet to you right now. Uh, as we record on the Resistance Broadcast Twitter account and see if you respond before the end of the episode. Guys, it's fun to give away stuff around this time of year. Tis the season, right? Yeah. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. So what do you guys think Maybe about... I should give away my Darth Vader James, can too. you explain the um, <laughs> explain the solo, solo figurine set uh, while I'm bringing up this tweet? What what exactly? Yeah. Do you mean? Okay, so, so if you've ever been inside of the Disney store, they have these like these boxes that um, have a little plastic thing around them. And inside um, they have a a bunch of stand stand up little figurines. They're, I don't know, I'd maybe say like two inches, two and a half, three inches tall, something like that. They're not very big, um, but they are surprisingly detailed for what they are. Um, They're not like super super well made they're just kind of plastic but surprisingly they, they look pretty good but here, here's the point is that they, they disney does this for like all of their properties so you could go to the store and you could get like all the moana characters you could get um all of um oh gosh I, you, you know me they I'm had like last jedi ones who, i know they have other star wars ones too they have uh they have like a, a huge Toy like Story, the entire cars. saga. To- Toy Story's example, Cars' example, uh, uh, Incredibles, like Wreck-It you can Ralph, get anything. Wreck-It Ralph, yeah. So, so they're they're really cool um, for collecting because with one purchase you get like a, a collectible of like every character in it. So this has 
Um, pretty much everybody that you can think of, like it's got Lando, it's got Han, it's got Chewie, it's got Emphis Nets, it's got L3, mm-hmm. um, it's got Beckett. It, I mean, just think of a character that was like a, a pretty prominent character in Solo and you're going to get that uh, figurine. So, um, and if you uh, want to check it out, just go to go down to like a Disney store or a Disney outlet or something like that. And uh, they're going to have tons of these. It's a, it's a fun little thing to get into, um, which is why I picked it because I've never bought them, but like I look at them every freaking time I go in the store and I think right. I should just buy these. I should just have like a whole mass collection of figurines. So I'm I just picked the mug because it was like super cool and casual. Oh, yeah, and, like, it was. I casually like Kylo Ren. I'll tell you what, John's taking a long time to get this tweet. I'm almost uh, done. Here we go. Almost done. He, and I'm he, sending he's almost it. Done. No. Yay, congrats. <laughs> I was just gonna say, let's head over to Ask the Resistance so we can wrap up this episode. Yeah, Lacey, what did they ask us this week? And then I'll keep my eye on to see if uh, she responds to the tweet. All right. Hey, guys, it's time for Ask the Resistance. I've been wondering, what are midichlorians? Uh, I'm getting over a cold, so I apologize if I sound... It's okay, Lacey. A little daisily. Uh, <laughs> the first question comes uh, from Andrew Staley Chucky. at deuce underscore Staley. And he asks, as a kid in 1983, I couldn't imagine what Star Wars would become in 2018. What do you think Star Wars will look like in 25 years? Uh, I'm going to kick this off. Ladies first. What do I think it's going to look like in 25 years? First of all, oh, man, I'm going to be old in 25 years. Um, You're old now, Grandma. I know. Oh, damn. (laughs) Um. I think that, first of all, the parks are going to be amazing. They're going to be open for many years at this point. Hopefully, they'll be expanded on. Um, Hopefully, they have ramps. Yeah. I think that (laughs) we're going to definitely have more TV shows and more movies. I think we'll have more saga movies, guys. I don't think this is the end. Um, I I think it's going to be really, really awesome. I don't think Star Wars is ending anytime soon. That's my answer. I like that answer. Yeah. For show. Oh, I, I believe I believe Mr. Andrew Staley is a patron of ours. So thank you. He Andrew. is. Uh-huh. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, I don't know why I did this. Because uh, you never know what to do hey, with your damn hands. I don't. What am I supposed to do with my hands? <laughs> uh, next is Jimmy at Old Guy Jedi. Well, and he's going to be really old in 25 years. He's yeah, already old. Yeah. He asks, what do you think <laughs> about an Obi-Wan movie that is similar to the book? It has flashbacks of his year with Satine. Oh. I think this would help explain his casual response to Padme and Anakin. James, what do you think? I was probably the worst person to pick for this question because... Why? Satine is think... in Rebels. Yeah, she's not in Rebels. She's in uh, Clone, Clone Wars. Wars. She's, te- she's technically in Rebels, too. Merry but, Christmas, James. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I hate to burst your bubble. There's, there's not going to be an Obi-Wan movie. Oh Jimmy. no! Shut your mouth. Pie no, in it, the yeah. face, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is the reason I was pick. I, I I was the bad pick for this question too because you say similar to the book, but but I haven't read the book because I don't read non-canon material. Oh, but, yeah. But what I do know about the book is that it's it's very liked. It's very appreciated. I, I I'm assuming you've read it too because you're saying I kind of like this idea of Obi Wan and where he was at this time. Um. Uh, if they did do a movie, would they do flashbacks to Satine? Would that be a good idea? Would it help explain some more? Um, I, the example you give is the casual response to Padme and Anakin. And I think that the Clone Wars already put Satine in the story to explain off why uh, Obi-Wan is so casual with Padme and Anakin. Um, not to mention Ahsoka knows about them as well. And they've also introduced like kind of the idea of loving and, and uh, like having a relationship with Ahsoka as well. Uh, so, or actually it's kind of not Canon that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's sort of there, but kind of not. Um, but uh, but yeah no I think that that's exactly why Satine exists is to is to to dive deeper into Obi Wan's backstory and uh, flashbacks are now a thing in Star Wars if it wasn't for Force Awakens and for Last Jedi I would have probably said Star Wars doesn't do flashbacks mm-hmm. but they do now so I'm gonna go with um, yes this would help make sense 
This would probably happen. Flashbacks, Satine, I think it, it could be there. They could do it if they wanted to, although they like to keep their movies separate. Um, but uh, none of this matters because they're not going to make an Obi-Wan movie. Wow. Hmm. I hate your answer. Sorry. Sorry. Next is what Mello a at a Grey Jedi, who is one of our <laughs> general Leias on Patreon. Hello. Hey. Um. And he asked, just finished Thrawn Alliances. Spoilers. The epilogue was quite interesting and brought some light to the things that Vader learned about Palpatine's plans in Order 66 on how he was orchestrating and playing both sides, dot, dot, dot. I wonder wonder if that new found knowledge, plus learning about his kids, had something to do with him turning on Palpatine in the end. John, what do you think? You're you're a big Palpatine fan. Mm, You're a big Vader fan. I do like both of those characters very much. No, but you really love Palpatine. I do. I, I am very interested in Palpatine. I love his arc. I think he has one of the he obviously has the longest stretching arc, uh, in my opinion, in the saga. Dude's um, got the biggest arc for sure. Huge arc, <laughs> huge. Um, That's all right, what so she said. <laughs> you can brag about that arc. Um, no, I don't. He's got a bigger arc than Noah. That's what I she don't said. think so. Um, th- I don't. I can't. I can't take anything from a Thrawn sequel book and put that much stock into what it does to Darth Vader. Um, come the end of Return of the Jedi, I truly think Vader was still, you know, trying to get Luke to convert right up until the end there, uh, and then he saw watching his son get fried and getting being electrocuted, um, and and seeing uh. The, the flip side of that and seeing what Palpatine does uh, and, and saying to, you know, I'm just going to replace your father with you and, and Vader probably realizing the torment he went through and just seeing his son almost get killed. It was a momentary uh, return to the light there for Vader. So I don't think this was anything festering at all. Um, and nothing indicates that uh, even right up until Luke screams never and starts beating Vader's ass. You have Vader saying he's going to turn Leia to the dark side. Um, So uh, while I think it's cool to kind of fill in the nooks and crannies with this type of stuff, uh, even like the Vader comics get a little crazy with this stuff, uh, I don't. I I don't think that um, planted any seed or or made him, uh, you know, think twice about Palpatine. I think he really did devote himself to Palpatine once he realized everything he had was gone and this is if if you it's a weird with Vader because if you don't if he didn't how do I put this if he didn't devote himself to Palpatine then his loss of Palpatine or of Padme and all that other stuff is for naught so he almost like was like I I have to devote myself to him because he's the reason all this other stuff happened so I think he was so clinched to that so I'm gonna say no there Mellow but thank you for the question General I appreciate it um, Merry Christmas Eve and and Christmas tomorrow to you. Okay, next is from Admiral Akbar patron Don Boring. And this is for hey, all of us. Thank what you so Don? much for being a patron. Um, if you yes. could change one thing in the entire saga and or the standalone movies, what would that thing be? Lacey, you go first. Yeah. Can you go first? Uh, yeah. Leia not hugging Chewie at the end of Force Awakens. What? Really? Yeah. That's, the one That's thing? such a minor thing. That but bothers James, what me. would you pick? What would I pick? I mean, that's a good pick, Lacey. Or that guy having a southern accent that flies the, the X-Wing in Force Awakens. Another thing that thoroughly annoys me. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you know, um, I'm I kinda th- this question's kind of springing on me. But you know what, you know what I'd say? Leia, um, kiss, Leia kissing Luke is another one. That <laughs> nah. <laughs> well, I, yeah. But but it kind of makes sense though that plays into that makes the reveal even better or the the fact that they they really didn't know does it though um, if they didn't if they wouldn't have done something like that then people might have theories about how they knew did they though they knew not well, I, what it's gross anyway we're not getting into that um I don't know uh, I was I was talking about this today with uh, with someone and uh, I'm gonna go with uh, the the way they treated Hux in uh, last Jedi oh. I think that uh, if last Hux? Jedi was exactly Good the answer. same if it was exactly the same 
but he just he really dove into that that Tarkin role. That would have been great because you've got you've got uh, Kylo who's supposed to be the Force. Um, that's how he uses his power. He believes in the Force, and you have which is supposed to be like Vader, and then you had Tarkin and Hux, and they're supposed to be like I don't know about that Force stuff, but I have technology and I have um, my armies, and that is that's true power in this galaxy, authority. And to undermine his authority uh, takes it away. Because if if Tarkin wouldn't have died in A New Hope, you best believe they wouldn't have treated him that way in in Empire Strikes Back. You Great, know? So yeah. That that you know that's a that's a little thing, but, uh, um, but still, I think it has long re- long results. Uh, I would say, just in general, shrinking the universe and mashing. In general. <laughs> yeah, in general. Um, shrinking the universe and mashing too many familiar characters from the original trilogy into the prequel trilogy. Um, from Anakin building 3PO to R2 knowing Obi-Wan and then him oh, not that knowing was mine him later. Too, the C-3PO. Yeah, and and Chewie being there and knowing Yoda. It was just like, it was such a fan service nonsense from Lucas. I don't care what people say. And it just bothered me. That one's me. a I, good one, man. Because like that, that Chewie and Yoda thing that makes almost no sense. Like yeah, It bothers the hell out I of me. I can't possibly imagine Chewbacca as much as he's like um, in debt to Han Solo and like looks up to him or whatever. It, it just seems so weird to be like Yo, I saw the force. <laughs> but yeah. does that mean like, that he had to see Han Solo then? Yoda he, on what? That means he had to what? Didn't doesn't that mean that Yoda had to meet Han Solo? Or are they saying that he met him a while ago? No, because Han met Chewie after Yoda went into exile. So mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Chewie was in was in Revenge of the Sith. Right. He it was and that was did an you ugly, not know that, Lacey? That was an ugly Chewie too. That was eyeshadow Chewie. It didn't even look like Chewie. Yeah. Yeah. But but they show him at the very end and then uh Yoda's like, Oh, goodbye, goodbye. And then he says, Goodbye, Chewbacca. Yeah, goodbye, like, Tarfo. <laughs> goodbye, Chewbacca. Yeah. Yeah. I will miss you both. He, I'm like, what? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> like, well, this is so weird. Why is he doing there? And then like right after that, like, what is where we, does Chewbacca go? And then we're maybe we should have done a Kessel run of things we would change. That is uh, something we yeah. should do then. But we're not, you know, we're not big nitpickers here. We're just having some fun. So don't worry, yeah. people. Thanks, Don. We loved your question. Next is Scott Gibson at Scott Gibby. Scott. Scott I, I am so sorry that you felt attacked by my trailer. <laughs> Drops. I'm not. Because <laughs> Lacey was wrong. He's, he felt personally victimized by my uh, <laughs> my beliefs. Um, so he said, you have to pick one utterly ridiculous plot twist for nine. <laughs> Do you pick A, Snoke isn't dead? Oh, B, no. B, Ray actually is Luke's oh, oh, God, daughter. No. C, Jar Jar has been a Sith all along. Oh, my Happy God. holidays. Yeah, so some happy about, holidays. That's like coal in my stocking. How about Scott victimizing you right back? I know. Yeah. <laughs> so is he saying pick one to be true? I'm yeah, assuming. If, yeah. if you had to pick one of these types of th- yeah type of thing, uh, Jar Jar has been a Sith all along. Oh, what? Oh you seriously God. would go with that over the other ones? No, I, honestly, I think I'd pick uh, Snoke isn't dead. Yeah, me too. John would eat. Yeah, that's mine as well. Yeah. See, Ray is th- just that it's one, too dumb. It's too dumb. Yeah, it, it go it goes in that order. It's like Snoke isn't dead. That's dumb. But okay, if they wanted to do it, they could do it. They could pull it off. They could make him be the mastermind, and he's playing. I mean, he didn't really. He didn't see that coming. Come on, guys, you yeah. guys should know we were pulling your leg on that. Like I could see them doing that in a roundabout way. Ray actually is Luke Scott Doctor. I've talked about that. <laughs> I said Doctor. <laughs> it sounded like. Um, yeah, it, 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 uh, I think people still think this is possible. I still I are, think people there still are, there like, are people. really think Let that, it the, go. that it's out there. Let yeah. the past yeah. die. But n- no, nobody thinks Jar Jar's been a Sith. That's, that's so, that is though, uh, I have satire. to say, it's, that is one of the funniest gifts though. Anytime I see, cause you never know that that's the one that's coming. Cause it could be. Anakin under there. Anytime they do the helmet reveal, yeah. the, like when Vader's dying, and then all of a sudden you see Jar Jar's face, I laugh every time. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for your questions. If you want to be on the show, follow us on Twitter at R B A T S W N N and send us your questions with hashtag AskTheResistance, and you could be on the show. 
We want funny questions, weird questions, thought-provoking questions, random yeah. questions, whatever you want. Back to right. you, John. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, the what's your favorite Star Wars movie thing? Like, we can't do that all the time. So, yeah, just like Lacey said, get in the mix. Throw some good ones at us. What was uh, the question you get all the time? Like, wait, wait, if it's just like a generic, like, what's your favorite Star Wars movie or your favorite planet or, you know, we've had those like discussions. So I'm always like linking people to the previous discussions and I feel bad, but, um, I gotta say I my go to asking some random questions like, like who would be the person you would want to go on a road trip with or something like that would be good questions for Ask the resistance mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows who I'd say. Uh, Wicket. I was going to say, like, gonk. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Whatever you guys think. <laughs> I'd pick, like, whoever's a good mechanic. Maybe Rose Tico, just in case the car breaks down. I'd yeah. be like, can you fix the car, please? She'd be like, sure. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to mention this. This is going to go so quick. There was a poll at Disney World, and you could, like, text in your answer so it would show up on the screen. And it was like, who would you rather have as a mechanic to fix your car? And it was like... Rose Tico or Han Solo? And I'm like, th- they have to know. They have to know. There's no way mm-hmm. Rose Tico wins that poll. Mm-hmm. It was 100% for Han Solo. I'm like, hmm, the f- the favorite uh, a male character beloved by fans for over 40 years or the controversial female minority <laughs> character that is, I don't know. I was like, there's no way. They they have to know. Why yeah, but little been, kids love Ro- La Rose Tico. Why wouldn't that have been Anakin though? He was always the fixer, not really Han Solo. Han Solo oh, would like bang on too, things yeah. to like do the Fonzie to make things work. But anyway, yeah, we he are, just he just tells Chewie where to go. He goes, that one goes there. Yeah, this one right. goes there. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, we're at the end of the show here. Um, just want to uh, say once again, congratulations to Big Dave for winning the bundle pack giveaway. Um, uh, and uh, Ashley at Kylo 10 uh, Folk Remander for winning our 3,000 follower goal giveaway. So hey. congratulations to you both. Yay. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you to our patrons um, over at uh, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. As James said before, um, your guys' support uh, really means a lot to us. You're really going to help us do a lot of great things, especially in four months at Star Wars Celebration. We are just getting started with our planning, and we're really excited to show you guys what we're going to be able to do, and it's thanks to a lot of you guys. Um, if those of you out there listening right now have any interest in at least checking out the Patreon page, just head to uh, the site, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Uh, you can start at $2 a month, and uh, that gives you access to the page right there. Boom, right out of the gate. And uh, try it out. Uh, let us know what you think um thank you guys who are all subscribed to us who listen to us on itunes soundcloud spotify and who are watching us on youtube with our silly hats and stuff on um we really appreciate that if you haven't yet subscribed make sure you do so this way you know when our episodes uh come out it's always going to be on mondays and thursdays twice a week so when you're subscribed You don't have to worry about remembering. You'll know. You'll get dinged, and it'll be good to go. Uh, Make sure you guys go to StarWarsNewsNet.com, our website for all of your latest news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. Every morning, pop on there, check out your Star Wars news, and stay up to date so you're up to date with us when our episodes fire up. Um, Let's see. What else? Oh, yes. TeePublic.com. Check out our merch. We have about 40 t-shirts and designs on there. Uh, tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast. Uh, they always have sales and they're always like, this is the last sale for the next blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, we're on sale again. Go check it out. So go check out our stuff over there. James does most of the designs for us. So um, if you even have any requests of something you'd like, um, if we dig it, maybe James, if he's uh, nice enough to you, maybe he'll make it. So we'll see. Now he says no. But he's a Grinch. That's okay. <laughs> he says there's no Kenobi movie. So what the heck, right? Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much that. You guys can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and writing and editing over at StarWarsNewsNet.com. James, how about you, sir? You know where to find me. It's at Myra Trunks right here. Whoop, it just popped out. Look at that, at Myra Trunks. And uh, yeah, that's uh, come and talk to me on Twitter. All right, Lacey, how about you? People can find me writing my fanfic about Kylo Ren and me going on a road trip at Lacey Gillerin on Twitter and on Instagram. That's a lot of tweets. Fabulous. For a whole fanfic story. It's going to be oh. epic. And it looks like 
Kylo Ten wrote back on Twitter. Yay! Yeah, which is kind of funny that um, she got through that quick. So you made it. You made. It. I mean, you 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 wouldn't have not won if you didn't write back while we were recording. You did it. Yeah, yeah. You made it like uh, Indiana Jones grabbing his hat, and she quote tweeted it with a shocked face and saying "Ah!" So congratulations, uh, Kylo Ten. Um, the other thing I want to say, thank you to especially to our resistance generals on the patreon page we have adam odal we have thomas we have Mello and val salute you guys thank you so much guys that brings us to the end of our better than the star wars holiday special uh thank you so much for joining us enjoy your holiday we hope you enjoyed your time with us whether you're traveling to family's houses or you're at home cooking or getting ready to wrap gifts or you're wrapping gifts safe travel safe holidays and we will see you on thursday where we are going to talk about The Jedi losing their connection to the Force and why that happened. So enjoy your holidays. Merry Christmas. And we'll see you on Thursday right here on the Resistance Broadcast. We'll see you around, kids. Happy holidays. 